Bethany, Missouri. Here we are in the fine town of Bethany, Missouri. This is where the biggest debacle in my loss prevention career happened. This distribution center behind me used to be a Pomida distribution center. Just quite the debacle. Let's talk about it. What up, everybody? It's George Langevier with Silver Hammer Surveillance. Here on the channel, we talk tech, we talk security, and sometimes I tell some crazy loss prevention stories from back in the day. And we haven't done one for a while, and we happen to be out this way for another job, so I thought, what the heck? Here we are in Bethany, Missouri, and this used to be the Pomida Distribution Center. And basically, I'm not going to use names or times or anything like that, but I'm going to just tell you at some point in time, there might have been some shady activity going on in this building. So I worked at Shopco, that's where I caught my crooks. Pomida and Shopco were kind of associated. At one time, Shopco owned Pomida. So sometimes loss prevention would work Pomida, Pomida loss prevention, and so on and so forth. So this was very beginning of my LP career. It's kind of a young punk just getting started. And they kind of saw that in me and kind of saw that as an opportunity. So the Pomida loss prevention crew approached me about possibly going undercover in this building. You know, a lot of things were happening. They didn't know what. They wanted to find out, but it was a big enough deal. Might have gone all the way to the top of the management. They wanted to know what was going on. So they thought, what better way to just send somebody in here to work? And so that's what I was going to do. At least that's what I thought I was going to do. So basically, the loss prevention person called me, called my regional LP. We got it all set up. And what we were supposed to do is we were supposed to come up with this story where basically, even though I was from Omaha, my mom was sick and in the hospital in Kansas City, which is closer to here than Omaha was. So I needed a place to work while I was taking care of my sick mom. I know, horrible, horrible, horrible pretense of a story, but that's what we went with. And so our Shopco Human Resources was supposed to call the Human Resources here and tell them the story and have it all set up to where this Regular employee could come work for a while while he's taking care of his sick mom. So that's what I was going to do. And it was going to be for a couple weeks. So a little backstory to the couple weeks part. I was fresh into loss prevention. I wanted to be a cop. I wanted to be a private detective in my, you know, formative years. So I thought, I'm going to take advantage of this. I'm going to get ready. I'm going in undercover for a couple weeks. So I dyed my hair blonde. And I wish I could find the picture of it. But it was horrible. It was a horrible dye job. But anyway, I grew my hair out. I dyed it blonde. I was going undercover. So I was all ready to go and preparing for this trip. I was going to come here all week, go back home for the weekends. And so Shopka was supposed to have it all set up with my story. And I was a little worried because we didn't know how high this corruption or whatever was going on here went. Did it go all the way to the top or what? So, you know, maybe the leader of this whole distribution center was in on it. I didn't know. So I was a little worried coming in, and uh, when I got here, I got even more worried because when I stepped in the office over there, nobody knew I was coming. And so right off the bat, I was like, oh crap, here we go. So I had to tell them my whole spiel. We had to call the Shopco Human Resources, who was like, oh yeah, we forgot to tell you. So that was strike number one. And again, a little side note, I was a part of three undercover operations in Shopco. All of them were debacles. If you go back and watch my video of a few videos ago about organized retail crime, I talk about somebody we sent in undercover to combat that. And go watch that video. I talk about how much of a debacle that story was as well. But yeah, so it didn't start off right here. I was sitting there wondering, oh my God, you know, you know, people had shotguns in the in the in their trucks here. I was like, what's going to happen to me? Nobody knows I'm coming. Are they suspect? What's going on? So anyway. I talked my way through it. Shopco HR got on the phone, helped me out. The story was good, so I was going to start coming here to work. Well, problem number two, number one, problem number one is they didn't know I was coming. Problem number two is all this stuff was happening at night that I was supposed to be catching, and they didn't have any hours for me at night. And because they didn't know I was coming, nobody knew this until I got here. So here I was, you know, trying to work here at night, and I couldn't, so I had to work here during the day. And the problem with that was, no offense to all the lovely ladies that work here, because there were just some elderly ladies that just needed a job, all the sweetest people on earth, 
And so I, here I was working with these women, having to tell them my mom was sick. They had all this sympathy for me. And it's, that's, that's all I could do is work during the day. I wanted to be at night where I wanted to blend in with the punks and whoever was doing all this crazy activity. But no, I was here with all the lovely day crew. And, um, you know, basically the only thing I found out from them is that the night crew, you know, back in the day you used to get the free pops on your bottle caps. Like you buy a Mountain Dew and if you open the cap, maybe you got a free pop. Well, they, were st they would put their uh, free pop caps in their desk drawers and they'd be stolen. So the night crew was stealing their bottle caps. Wow, I was on it. Crime number one foiled. I was here. I was going to get everybody arrested for the free bottle caps. Woohoo! But th that's all I could get out of them. So I wanted to come at night and I couldn't. So, you know, if we would have coordinated this better, we would have found that out. But no. So I'm stuck here during the day trying to get all my reconnaissance I could. And we're going to go over there in a second. But I was staying at the Super 8. And basically, I was relegated to, at the nighttime, standing on a picnic table with binoculars, trying to see in these dock doors here what was going on. I mean, allegedly there were forklift races. People were running into the walls with forklifts. There was theft. There was um, all sorts of activity going on here, supposedly, which I was supposed to be catching. And I was trying to find it, which you'll see in a second how far away that Super 8 is. I was trying to find it all from the picnic table with binoculars instead of being in here at night like we had hoped. So here I am, my horrible dye job, lying to these lovely ladies about my dead mom. <laughs> she, was, she was supposed to be sick, sorry. Um, so, but in my head, I was like, I might as well be telling them they're dead. Um, but it was just crazy. So it was just a big debacle from the beginning to the end. So I was here for a week and a half, maybe two weeks. And basically all I ended up proving from the picnic table was the forklift races part. I think it got a couple people fired for reckless um, activity with the forklift, but just crazy. So here I was all excited about my first undercover operation in loss prevention. It's going to crack it wide open, bring all these people down and no offense to anybody that worked here. Cause I'm sure even at night there were some fantastic people that worked here. Maybe it was one just little bad crew. I don't know. In fact, maybe they were all honest. I don't know. All I got was the forklift activity and in, in loss prevention, that was like kissing my sister. It wasn't very exciting. Um, so, anyway, we're going to head over to the Super 8. I'm going to show you how I did all this investigating. All right, so here we are on the side of the Super 8. And i got to say a big shout out to the Super 8 for accommodating this weirdo that just sat out on those picnic tables all week and with his binoculars, like a weird peeping Tom. But it's hard to see, but the distribution center is right through those trees. Now, back then, it was a long time ago. Those trees would have been smaller, but you can still see it, but that's what I did. I sat on top of this picnic table right here with my binoculars, and I watched those doors to see if I could see what was coming in and out. And I gotta tell you, after doing loss prevention for several more years, to think how limited I was in my, my tools to crack this thing open, it's just crazy. So, you know, Shopko's not around anymore, Pomida's not around anymore, and Payroll was part of our enemy, and that goes to, you know, I couldn't get my night hours there because of payroll, and if we could have just worked together with someone in that building to let me work at night anyway, but we were, everybody was suspect of me from the top on down. When I walked in that building, I was worried that it was just, they looked at me up and down like, what are you doing here, dude? And um, that could have been avoided. Shop go HR. Sorry. Uh, but anyway, it was a very interesting experience, and... For the beginning of my LP career, I mean, instantly, an uh, experience I'll never forget. But uh, yeah, Bethany, Missouri, cool to revisit it all these years later. And just strange to see that building something else. Kind of sad that it's not mine anymore. Like I said, I'm sure there's countless wonderful people that work there. Countless wonderful managers all the way to the top. Like, who knows, maybe this regime was just falsely accused. I don't know. But uh, I wanted to find out tried to find out so yeah I know we've been talking tech and security mostly and trying to sprinkle in some shoplifting stories for those of you that enjoy those this one was a crazy one so hopefully you like the story hopefully you like the video come back for more tech talk security talk and occasionally these crazy shoplifter stories but uh, signing off from Bethany Missouri the site of my biggest undercover operation yet biggest debacle of my lost prevention career, but good times. I look back on it fondly, like all I do all my lost prevention time.
So, until the next video, peace and love.